Using geometry nodes, I created a cardboard generator. And it's so simple, I can just go into the top view here, draw a shape, and it'll automatically create a piece of cardboard for me. So I'm gonna go through the geometry nodes so you understand how I made this and created this inner wave on each sheet of cardboard. So in geometry nodes, it basically comes down to three sections. I'm gonna go through each of them individually, the front and back sheet, the inner wave, and then cutting out that inner wave. So to start, we have a Bezier curve. Let me hide this so we can actually see better. So I have this Bezier curve and I use a fill curve to basically create planes on the surface of my object. This uh, is super helpful in the basis of our mesh. And I then bring that, that into an extrude mesh I think you probably know what extrusion does. We're gonna use this node a lot. And after extruding it, I offset it a little bit. And then I take that same mesh, I do the exact same thing, but I push it downward. So in general, when we do that, we have basically a sandwich of planes or extruded planes. And then the last part is how do we create the inner wavy mesh here? So I'll delete that. And it starts with a curve line. So curve line is, um, you know, a two point line and I resample it, which you won't be able to see, but I create a lot more density here. And then I use a set position node to create this inner wave. And the key here is using the sine node. So I take the positions X from here to here, and that's what I'm using to sample in the sine and I use a multiply here to choose my density. And then I use this for a multiply here to choose the amplitude. And obviously you can tweak these values based on the scale and dimensions you want. Um, lastly, I use a combined node because I just want this wave to be in the Z axis. Because then I'm going to convert it into a mesh and extrude it. So this is basically the, the plane or the sheet which we can start to draw our shapes on. But um, once we draw our shapes on here, we're actually going to create a cutter object that will cut out of this wavy piece of geometry so it can sit in the middle. And in order to cut it, we use a Boolean node. And Boolean nodes need fully enclosed meshes. So meshes that have no gaps. And right now our mesh is infinitely thin. So it actually wouldn't work with a Boolean. So I extrude it like we've been doing. Um, I'll just make this a little bigger so you can see. With one extrusion, there's actually an issue here. Um, from the bottom, it looks good. You know, it's perfectly extruded from the edge. But from the top, you see it's kind of like a hollow, uh, hollow shape. So I can actually turn on face orientation here. You can see uh, this is good, but it's not fully enclosed. So a Boolean actually wouldn't work with just this. So let's bring it back to where we had it because I'm doing something just very thin. Uh, and we're actually gonna just extrude it the same amount but in the opposite direction. And I actually ended up using a flip node, but I, you'll see in the Boolean union, we get a fully enclosed mesh from top and bottom. So this is what we're looking for. So there's extrusion one, extrusion two, and we basically flipped the, um, the, the faces so that we can make sure that they're both blue. So now that we have this, um, we need to create this cutter object. So I'll go back up here. We took the original fill shapes that we had, and we're gonna use this again to extrude it. And we extrude a very big one this time. So uh, we have the same issue as before. We can't use this mesh Boolean on a, uh, an object that isn't fully enclosed. So that's why we extrude it again this way. We use a flip, we combine those two. So now we have this big extrusion that's fully enclosed. And we basically create this cube and you could create this cube at whatever size you want, make it bigger, smaller. Um, but I just made a big cube and then we boolean it and now we have this shape 
cut out. So we're basically going to use this cutout to cut out this wavy shape that we just made. So you can see once we do it, we have that inner wave with real geometry and it's all generative. And you can obviously tweak this as much as you like. Uh oh, I think I dragged that a little too far. Um, but let's just type in a value like 40 and kind of see the we can have bigger waves or smaller waves, uh, whatever type of cardboard you're trying to make. And lastly, I have two materials. I have a cardboard inner material and then a cardboard outer material that I put onto uh, both sheets on the top, which ultimately create the final image. So I'm going to show you my shader as well. Uh, let's start with the outer cardboard, so the cardboard sheets. It is pretty simple. It's basically two noise textures. Let's turn on the lights and let's get close so you can see. So the first noise texture is just like um, a fairly big noise. So I have uh, the scale set to 50 and it just creates these little, these little marks. So cardboard doesn't have like a perfect consistency. So I create these little, little marks. And then the other noise is a, a larger in scale noise, but um, just gives us these little dots. So then I use a mix RGB, I combine it for the first one, and then I combine the second one. So just to go again, you see the difference is you have a few uh, extra spots here between these two. And lastly, I put it into the final principle, the BSDF. So this is actually completely default. I didn't change any values here, but I did add a bump. So you can see these, there's these kind of, um, these lines going across of it, across it. So obviously the, the easy way to do that is with two wave textures. I have, or you could do one wave texture, but I wanted a little bit of inconsistency. So the first wave texture is like very consistent. And then the second one is much bigger. And I put those through color ramps just to tweak the levels a little bit. And then I use a mix RGB node. And I also add a noise texture because uh, the surface of cardboard is very rough and adding a little bit of of noise all around will help give it that roughness. So this is the final um, texture that we're going to put into the height of a bump. And you can kind of see there's like these really soft noises uh, throughout the piece as well as these, uh, these lines. So if I put that in, you get the final shader. The cardboard inner shader is very simple, just a principal BSDF. Roughness is increased slightly and I also slightly offset the color. If you found this helpful, please subscribe. I'll leave this file on my Patreon for anyone who wants to download it, and any likes or comments would be appreciated. Thank you for watching.